bought a bike park, two houses and a garage of dreams for less than three new e-bikes, which is ridiculous. <laughs> So, what have I done? What? Oh God, what have I done? I don't know. This is amazing, this place. I've fulfilled a lifetime dream. <laughs> I can't believe it. I've brought a farm in Italy, including two houses down there to renovate and this huge barn, workshop, to create a garage, test centre, studio, office and the gym, which is started up there. There's also a huge piece of land, which is behind me, to build test tracks. The first track starts literally just there. A cardboard pump track in the garden, uh, a trials motorbike gully and hopefully lots more in the future. So this is a dream, a dream come true for me and it's basically the culmination of everything I've been working towards in my whole life. I uh, grew up in near Birmingham in the UK, uh, racing cross country, downhill, then spending years and years riding BMX, digging dirt jumps, uh, racing some four cross. This eventually progressed to scraping through qualifying at a World Cup downhill in Schlamming, uh, racing the Enduro World Series from the first ever race in Puntala. Then working as the European technical editor for Pinkbike for five years. And then the last two years I've been doing various things in the bike industry. My plan now is to build a mountain bike and e-mountain bike test center on the land to provide you guys with independent, unbiased and open reviews of the latest bikes, as well as some interest in tech and some insane custom builds. Anyone who's been following me at Pink Bike or over the last few years knows I've done some interesting bikes. My custom robot, custom Starling, custom Nikolai with a gearbox, completely made in Europe. And more recently, my Nikolai G1, which I built last year, which was my, my, my look into the future of mountain bikes and particularly enduro mountain bikes. It was a 210 mil travel, mullet, had upside down fork, dropper post, gears. It's really one bike to do it all. On the land, I'm planning to build um, test tracks. There's not really enough land to build super long trails, but I wanna build three different climbs of various degrees of difficulty. Uh, on the way back down, I'm gonna build a variety of short and repeatable test tracks. For example, flat corners, Burn corners, progressive size drops, jumps, uh, different types of compressions and different kinds of repeatable bumps uh, to test suspension. The, the farm's also located about one hour from Finale Ligure, one hour from some amazing bike parks in the Piemonte, Piemonte Alps. And three, four hours drive, we can get to the Port de Soleil, San Juan, Pila, Verbier, the heart of mountain biking in the Alps. So we've got all bases covered for all types of different bikes. There must be someone running a motorbike test YouTube channel here because every time I turn the camera on, there's a motorbike going past. <laughs> the rest of the time, there's no one. So we have the test tracks. I'm also planning to use some modern uh, telemetry systems to gather data on the bikes. I'm planning to get a suspension dyno for the garage and I also want to build some jigs in the garage to test frame stiffness, handlebar stiffness. Hopefully in the future we can get some rigs to test, to test brakes or wheels, tires. There's lots of options in the future. Hopefully with all this combined together, I'll be able to give you guys the best independent and open bike reviews available. They'll also be comparable as new bike models are launched. We should be able to reference how the bikes perform 
in the lab and on the trails compared to the previous models. So if we test a 2020 specialized enduro and then the launch new the 2021 model, we'll be able to reference the new bike against the old bike to see if it really is, is better than the, the previous one. To prove that the bike reviews are independent, I'm going to be buying the bikes and then making you pay for them. <laughs> Don't do the evil laugh. Don't do evil laugh. Evil. Yeah. We know that most websites doing, doing bike reviews rely on advertising for the mountain bike companies. Many or most YouTube reviews are paid for nowadays. Three, four, five thousand euros. To fund this, I'll be giving the bikes away in online raffles. So for example, a thousand people can spend 10 euros on a ticket and have a chance to win a bike. So pretty good odds, one in a thousand. This will include postage to your door and hopefully some other goodies to go with it. To break it down, if I'm giving away a 6,000 euro bike, the raffle will hopefully raise 10,000 euros and this will pay for postage, a filmer, tax, building the bike park. And hopefully at the end, I can make a wage from it. Uh, the property's super cheap and my lifestyle's pretty frugal, so we won't be wasting tons of money on expensive offices or cars or anything else like that. I'm also hoping that this will grow into a community project to create some jobs for a filmer, a social media boffin, a mechanic, and hopefully other test riders in the future. You always get like stressed out and then just you need to chill out, mate. There's a the huge amount of land with the property. There's unlimited wood to burn. We're fully south facing, which is good for solar. Uh, there's tons of fruit trees in the garden, a great climate. So part of the plan is to become as off grid and decentralized as possible using the land as much as I can. So we have the first climb built and the first ridiculously technical descent built, which both start and finish just behind me. Come on, lad, that bit's well easy on the e-bike. Provided by the guys at Miss Spent Summers, which brings me to the sponsor of today's video. Well, they're not sponsoring me, but they've built a track for me, which is great. They, these are a great couple of guys, Ben, James, Victor, and a few others, who create these great yearbooks about World Cup downhill racing and Enduro World Series. We also have to do trail guides. I've got a new line of responsibly sourced merch coming, and there's nobody more genuine than these guys in the bike industry. So please go to their site, buy something from them, it would be great to support those guys and give something back to them. So next week, I'm going to raffle off the first bike, arguably the most expensive BMX in the world. You can watch the video up here if you click the link, which was created by Flatfish Films, which is now called Charge Media. And then the next upcoming videos are going to be about my custom built Nikolai gravel bike with a gearbox and belt drive, my custom made dirt jump bike, and I'm also building a Banshee Titan. I'm really hoping that these initial videos and raffles are going to generate some traction, give you guys something interesting to watch and raise the money to start buying to start buying some bikes to test. Of course, there's a lot of work to do on this project. I need to furnish the garage with storage, workbenches, tools. I need to sort out some security for the property. Uh, I need tools to build more tracks and work on the land. I'm going to need some help from some bike engineers for the test jigs and the methodology to, to do the, the frame testing. Basically, I've got nothing at the moment, no money, no tools, and I need to get a lot of stuff to get this project going. So if you or anyone can help, please get in touch. Any comments or suggestions are welcome. Let me know which bikes you'd like to see reviewed first, and hopefully we can get some bikes during this, uh, this global bike shortage. So yeah, it's the start of a big journey for me and hopefully together we can we can create something interesting. I'm quite overwhelmed with the amount of things that I've got to do, so this is just a short introduction to get the ball rolling. So finally, if you can like, subscribe, to follow me on this journey, go and buy something off these guys, Miss Spent Summers. Yeah, let's see where it goes. I'm super excited and mildly terrified. Cheers. Mm.